Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 39. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to finish off our lightning spell by adding some graphics. Let's switch to the code. So the first thing to take a look at is this very simple lightning sprite which I created off camera. And uh, the only sort of thing to point out is that to get that real sort of retro feel we're going to be tiling this sprite a couple of times. Um, and so for that reason you can see that the sprite starts and ends in the same position. And this means when we stack lots of them on top of each other it will look like one bolt of lightning. Um, it'll be a lot more obvious once we see it in action, so let's go. The first thing we're going to need to do is to create a new type of sprite in our game. So um, going back a fair few episodes now, um, we have at least two, or we created a second type of sprite, the sprite sheet. And the idea is that to the rest of our game, the sprite, uh, this class here, and the sprite sheet look exactly the same, so we can swap them out for one another. Um, in programming terms, they basically have the same interface, although Lua is a um, is not a strongly typed language, so it doesn't have direct interfaces, uh, that doesn't really matter. To the rest of the game, both of these classes look the same. So we're going to create a third class, which again looks exactly the same to the rest of our code, and this class is going to be called Tiled Sprite. And we'll just create some boilerplate so that it acts like a class. And we want it to take an image path, so the location of the image file we would like to use. And this will also take a width and a height, which we will use in a moment. We create the instance of our class and we return it. So let's take a look at our sprite and um, sort of take note of the things we will need our tiled sprite to do to well for it to behave need for it to behave in the same way. So let's have a look. Um, we need a draw method which takes um, self view x and y and flipped. We need a create method which takes an image path and we need a size uh, which we actually use in a few other places. Now we should really tidy this up and access it using a get size method um, but we'll save that for another episode. So that being said let's go ahead and create a draw method. And we said this would take self view x, y, and we don't really care about flipped for now, but we can uh, take it as an argument anyway. And we also need a size, which we'll do in just a second after we've set up a few other things. So we'll need an image because we want to uh, draw an image just like our other sprites. And to do this, we just do love.graphics uh, new image. And the file name is Oops, image path. And there's some basic setup we want to do on our image. Uh, set filter. So we'll just set the filter to nearest. And what this means is when the image gets resized, it will stay nice and crisp. Um, it won't try and blur the edges, which is what we want for pixel art. The other thing we're going to do on this image uh, is to set the um, wrap mode to repeat and repeat and this is what's going to let us tile the image or draw it multiple times using just one sprite. Okay now we need to grab some image data so we'll say width is equal to instance.image get width and height is equal to instance.image get height. Oops, get height. And now we're going to create a quad. So a quad in, um, in Love2D is just an area of a sprite or the area of an image that you'd like to draw. 
But a neat trick is that quads can actually be bigger than the uh, source sprite. And if this happens, then the source sprite will just get scaled or repeated. And in this case, we want to repeat it, which is why we set the wrap mode to repeat. Um, all will become apparent. So if we do love.graphics new quad, we can see we need x, y. So this is the x and y position on the image that we're um, drawing using the quad. So we'll just say 0, 0 because we want our quad to start in the top left hand corner of the image. Now for width, we will say width times W. So we're taking the width of our image, which we've loaded in, and we are then timing, uh, timesing that by this W value. So this W is the number of times we want our image to repeat. In fact, let's change it. Rather than W, let's call this repeat X, and let's call this repeat Y. That's a bit more obvious. So now we can say width times repeat x, and we'll just neaten this up. And height times repeat y, and this s, w, and s, h are the source width and height, which we can get by saying uh, instance.image get dimensions. So that's just a handy. Um, a quicker way of getting the width and height, or we could just pass those in as well. Both will work there. So now we have our quad, and finally um, we want the size. Um, and we'll just set this to love, or we'll just set this to the width for now, which is what we do everywhere else. Um, eventually we should come back and um, make this a bit nicer. But that will should give us a basic tiled sprite. Now we just need to draw it. And in order to draw it, we'll just do um, what we do for everything else, which is use our view helper, which takes a function. And we just do the drawing inside the function. So we'll say love.graphics.draw, and we will draw our quad, and we also pass in our image, um, self.image and then x and y. And let's just make sure that draw is available on the instance as well. Okay, so now how are we going to use our tiled sprite? Well, we're going to use it to create the lightning um, for the storm spell which we added last time. So uh, let's just do a quick refresher on that. So our storm spell um, it works, it damages our enemies and it stuns them, but we don't see anything happen on the screen. So now is a chance to actually make something happen. So the way we're going to do that is by going into our mobs um, folder here and creating a new folder called FX. And we'll use this to add all of the mobs which we only use for special effects in our game. And one of them will be lightning. Dot lure. So the idea is that these, um, these are going to be entities like everything else, but they, they're not going to take part, or probably not going to take part in any collisions or anything, um, they're just going to be for decoration, so we'll put them in a slightly different place. And we'll just create our lightning class, lightning, return, lightning, and lightning.create is a function, and it will need to take a position to start with. And we'll say local entity, and we'll pull in our entity code because our lightning, um, our lightning effect will just be um, an entity like everything else. So this is in source logic entity. And we'll start out by saying an instance of lightning is an entity dot create. And when we create an entity, let's uh, double check what we need by looking at our slime code. So when we create a slime, we pass in a sprite, a position, and the rest of these things we don't really need to worry about for um, something which isn't going to move or take part in any collisions. 
So now we can use our tile sprite, which we just made. And this is in source graphics tiled sprite. Oops, dot create. And here we can use the lightning sprite. Where are we? Uh, let's see, assets, sprites, fx, lightning. Sprites, fx, lightning, dot png. So we'll pass in our sprite. And we also need a position, which we'll just pass in when we create the lightning. And we'll return uh, lightning. Now to actually use our lightning, we can go back to the storm spell which we uh, created last time and add in a few more lines. So just a quick reminder of how this code works. We have a method called cast which grabs the current room and the inventory and the number of potions out of the inventory and if the player has enough potions to cast the spell um, then we go ahead and loop through every single uh, slime or every single mob that's in the room and if that mob is an enemy, and currently only our slimes are tagged as enemies, so for every slime in the room, we make that slime take some damage, and we add the stun status. So what we'll also do now is add a new entity to the room using the add entity method um, on room, and this will be our lightning um, effect. So let's require that. Uh, lightning equals require. Where are we? Source uh, mobs fx lightning. Oops, lightning. Yep, that was right. And here we can say lightning dot create, and we need to just grab the position, get position. Uh, of the mob. Now when I was writing this episode I noticed that our entity class currently has a two position method uh, which isn't used anywhere so we're just going to um, change this to be get position instead so it lines up with everything else. I think we were using it at some point but we don't use it anymore so it's okay to overwrite it. Um, and hey, if we are using it, something will go wrong and we'll come back and fix it. So we'll say get position. And this is just on the entity class. Um, we'll return self.position. So we can just pull the position of entities uh, out of them when we need that position. Local get position is a function. It returns self.position. And down here, rather than to position, we'll say get position equals get position. Check. Good. So now mob get position should work and let's see what happens. Attempt to index global INST inside of tile sprite lua 12. Line where are we? Yep. Inst rather than uh, isn't repeat x a nil value ah yes so when we create our lightning sprite we also need to say um, we are going to repeat uh, once in the x direction and let's say 8 to start with in the y direction so we should have eight lightning sprites on top of each other. Aha. Attempt to call method get position a nil value storm line 21. Storm line 21 mob get position. So that's probably a typo on entity. get position equals get position let's see local get position 
So that should be okay. Get position, there we go. Just a typo there. Now let's try again. To index local another a nil value. Rectangle line 12. So this is an interesting one. This is because our collision code is currently getting triggered. Um, when our lightning sprites collide with things. Sprite position, so that should be fine. Return lightning. And so let's take a look at our rectangle class, which deals with our collisions. Self another, another dot x. So this should be Should be fine. Dot create. Now does lightning give us back an entity? Ah, here we go. So lightning should be returning inst rather than lightning because we want to return the instance we've created. Ooh, drawable expected got quad. So now finally we just have to swap these arguments around. Hopefully. <laughs> Self.image, it is pretty uh, late here, so sorry for the, uh, the mistakes. I guess we wrote a lot of code before we tested it, and it's always an idea to, uh, a good idea to sort of write one class at a time and test it rather than going really fast and then having a whole bunch of errors to fix in one go. But there we go, so we are starting to get our lightning. Now there's a few more things we need to do uh, just to get it all working properly. The first thing we'll do is inside our tiled sprite, just for convenience, we'll add a Y offset, which will be equal to height times repeats Y. And what we'll do is when we draw, oops, now what was that? There we go. Um, when we draw our um, lightning sprite, we'll just um, offset it by the offset so that it's drawn at the, um, so the whole sprite is drawn from the bottom rather than from the top which sort of makes sense if we want to stack a whole bunch of sprites up. So that should fix that. And at the same time, we can also add in um, a slight offset so the lightning gets drawn in the middle of the entities rather than on the edge. And so we just need a few placeholder values. We want a rotation of zero and a scale of one. And that's just so we can pass in some values here. Scale, scale, because what we really care about is these two next values. Um, and these are an X and a, this is a different way of specifying X and Y offsets. So for the X offset, we want to say self.image get width divided by two. Oops, get width divided by two. And for the, um, other offset, we want an offset of zero for the Y offset, because we've already dealt with that somewhere else. In fact, for the Y offset, we could pass it in here. Um, but whatever, we've dealt with it somewhere else. So it should, uh, so now our lightning should get drawn in the right place. There we go, very nice. And the last thing we need to do is um, make our lightning remove itself after a period of time. So what we'll do is we will pull in our remove self status, which we uh, created a couple of episodes ago from source logic uh, statuses, uh, remove self. And then when we create our lightning entity, we'll pass in the duration we want our lightning to last for. And then we can just say instance add entity um, and here, sorry, add instance add status. 
and to this status um, we'll just pass in a remove self oops remove self dot create um, and this just takes a duration which we'll pass straight in from the arguments and then inside of our storm spell whoop, go away, inside of our storm spell we'll pull out um, this value here which is how long the entities get stunned for um, let's call it stun time equals 50 then we can use stun time here and also here so the lightning will last for the duration of the stun let's see if it works excellent so now we have um, a graphical component to our spells as well Um, great! So I will wrap up the episode here. Um, as you can probably tell, I'm getting a bit tired, starting to make a few mistakes. But I hope you enjoyed the episode nonetheless, and I will see you next time. Thanks very much, and bye for now.